Previously, we've learned how to use GeoPandas and use the plotting function to visualize the GeoPandas data sets. Now, when you plot something on a map and you have some data, you do not have any context around it. You don't know where it is. You don't have a base map. You just plot something in isolation. And typically when you create any map, you want to plot something on a base map. In this notebook, we're going to learn how to use different base maps from open source data sources and add them to your map. So people know where you are showing the results and you can you know, create very interesting and artistic map as well using those. We'll, first, we'll make a copy in a tribe. So go ahead and make a copy. Connect to the backend. This notebook shows you how to create a visualization of eclipse that occurred in 2017. NASA has shared data for this eclipse. They share really detailed analysis and data for all the solar eclipses. So if you love kind of geeking out about solar eclipse, go and check out the links I've shared here. They also share really cool visualizations. So a lot of the visualizations that you see here are inspired from what the website has created. Let me show you the page here. They have similar data sets and you know, visualization for other eclipses as well. So you have this kind of globe visualizations, you have the path of the totality. So this is the path of the totality. This is the umbra shadow. So that is when the eclipse was the moon fully covered the sun and you had like complete darkness. And then as you go up or away from that, you have penumbra shadows. So partial eclipse that you can be seen and you can kind of see that around it. So we have this data, they give you those shape files. You can download those shape files from here and you know, create your own map using those. So let's see how we can do that. For this exercise, we're gonna use this package called context tiley, which is not pre-installed in Colab. So we just use pip install and install that here. And we're gonna go and download the data. There are three shape files. One is a path. So the, the polygon showing the path of the solar eclipse, umbra, this is the shadows, polygons showing where the shadows were, and where you could see this. And then penumbra shape file is another polygon showing which regions experience what kind of solar eclipse. So 100%, 90%, and so on. And you can download all of that. Let's read all the shape files. So first we're going to read the path shape file. So this is just a single polygon, one polygon in this shape file. And this shows the path of that. The umbra shape file are smaller polygons along the path showing that, you know, what was the local time and, you know, where the, where you could see the eclipse. So they're they not as dense, but they can, at different intervals, you have different polygons showing the, the umbra shadow. We have this two polygon data set. Let's see what they look like. So we create a simple visualization. So we start our plot the way we always do. We create a subplot. We get reference to the figure and axis. We set the size and we just call, we have this path GDF, which is just this one polygon. And we just say, show me on this axis. We have two parameters, face color and edge color. So face color is the fill, edge color is the border, and alpha is the transparency. So we say, show me in this border, no fill, 50% transparency. And we see this polygon. Okay, something. I, I don't really know what's this, right? If you just showed this to somebody, they say, I don't know what is this, because there's no context. Like, I don't know where is this, what you're looking at, but we're going to fix that. At least we can now visualize this data. Uh, one of the things we can do is we can call, plot multiple things on the same axis. So when you're creating a GIS map, you, typically you have multiple layers and you want to overlay those layers and show them together. You can do the same thing with Python where we have an axis, we can just put multiple things on that. So we plotted this, we can go ahead and plot the other geodata frame on top of that. So let me just say, I have this, I'm going to take the umbra GDF and plot that. This one, I'm just going to go with a darker fill color and no edge color. And now I have those shadows also plotted on the same map. So if you want to plot multiple layers, just keep calling plot and plot them on the same axis and you'll have this overlay map. So this is okay, but again, I don't know where this is. I don't know what this is. It'll be nice to have a base map, maybe a map of you know, the world behind it. So we know what is it. And typically when you're creating visualization, you have those in QGIS, you can add an open street map base map or some other base map and do this. In Python, if you want to add base map to your plots, we can use this package called context styling. So let's fix this. Let's add some base map using context styling. 
we have imported the install and imported the package context tally. By convention, it's imported as CX. So CX refers to the context tally package. It comes pre-built with many base maps. So if I say CX.provider and look at the results, it shows me that it comes with this whole bunch of services. All of this are web services which have hosted tiles. The way those maps are is they have different tiles, the base map style in a particular style, chopped up into small, small tiles and hosted on a web server. And you can request those tiles saying that I'm in this location, give me the tiles for this location at this Zoom level. There are different providers who give the service. Most of the time when you're creating a map, you want to use something from OpenStreetMap. So OpenStreetMap has a really nice style, mapnik style, you can use that. And they'll give you the tiles that you see on OpenStreetMap. So if you go to OpenStreetMap.org and this map that you see. So if you want to add a map like this. So if you want to add a map like this to your data. So let's say I am, we are all US here. And I want to add a base map that looks like this. I can request these tiles from OpenStreetMap. So you give me those tiles. They are pre-rendered as PNG images, and you just get those and it'll be added as a base map to your plot. These tiles are different at different zoom levels. When you zoomed out, you see fewer labels. When you zoom in, you see more labels. You can also request the tiles at a specific zoom level so that you get more tiles. You get tiles with specific labels. But remember, as you zoom in more, you need more tiles to fill the area because they are at higher resolution. So again, if you zoomed out, you have lesser tiles. If you zoom in, you get more number of tiles that needs to be downloaded to stitch the map for that. There are many different services where we can pick one. Again, we're going to explore this reading exercise of different data set. For now, we're going to use the data from Open Topo Map. So there is a service called Open Topo Map, and we can say I want the data for Open Topo Map on my map. So let's fix our visualization. We had created this. We can add a base map. So we say context tally, add base map on the same axis. The CRS, we need to give the CRS because the tiles are in the CRS of 857. This is the web Mercator tiles. So when they are downloaded, they need to be reprojected to match the CRS of your map. So we say our map is in this CRS or whatever the path is there. And then we have to give what is the source. So CX dot providers to open topo map is the map that we want. So let's run this cell and see how our map changes. We have this map kind of topographic rendering as a base map, and we have something on the map. If you don't like this, we can switch to a different provider. Let's try the open street map. So let's say we want to use open street map. Open topo map comes only in one style. So you can just say, give me providers.opentopomap, OpenStreetMap comes in many different styles. There's a black and white style and there's some of, you know, German style and so on. So if you want to use OpenStreetMap, I need to give the provider and the style. So I'm going to replace the OpenTopomap with OpenStreetMap.mapnik. And now I'll get base map, which is in the OpenStreetMap mapnik style. And now you can see the map, base map is changed. So again, this will change depending on the provider and the style of the map that you want from the provider. So this is a good visualization, but you can see I don't have as many labels. The map also seems very low res. Can we request the tiles at a higher zoom level? So we can say, I want the tile at a higher zoom level. Let's say I want to add one more parameter, zoom. We're going to ask at level four. The higher the zoom level, the more number of tiles will need to be downloaded. So you'll see that the cell takes a while to run because downloading those tiles in the background, they are cached. So next time you run it, it'll be already there. So you don't have to re-download them. But again, the first time it takes a while. And you can see that the map looks much better. You have more labels, it's a higher resolution. We can keep going. If you do five, you'll get more labels and so on. Since we are kind of looking at the whole country and we quite zoomed out, this seems like a good compromise between the quality and the kind of labels and what we want, but you can try increasing zoom level and see. Remember that every increase in zoom level will download four times more number of tiles. There's some helper functions that you can check of, you know, what is the current zoom level of the map. So if you say for our path GDF, if you just request the default zoom level will be three. We can say, if I request a zoom level four, how many tiles will it be downloaded? So it says it'll download 15 tiles. At zoom level five, 
will download 36 tiles and so on. Right? So as you increase the zoom level, you will get more and more tiles. So sometimes, you know, people will just say zoom level 10 and you're looking at the whole US, it might take an hour to download all the tiles that you need to stitch that map for you. So we can try different tiles, but we are happy with this. Let's see the, so this plot is okay, but again, I'm not very happy the extent. I want to show the map in a, you know, change the extent of the map, show a little larger area. Also the projection is not correct. I'm using 4326 for this, which is not the right projection to show this data. Maybe we want to choose a projection that is better suited for the region. We are mostly over the U S so we can choose some projection that is well suited for the U S we can say, let's use some equal data projection that is suitable for the U S. So we reproject our data to that. We change our extent to be the extent of say the bounding box of North America. And then we can say, now we can plot a map for that extent in that projection. So let's update and improve this visualization. We can choose the CRS and an EPSG code. This 9311 is the US National Atlas Equal Data Projection. You can use any EPSG code. Here we chose this because it's well suited for the region that we are trying to visualize. We reproject both the shape files that we are trying to visualize. GeoPandas has this function to CRS, which will take any GeoData frame, reproject it to the chosen CRS. We also want a bounding box for the US. So we know the coordinates in lat long, so I want my map to have this bounding box. I want to zoom my map to that, but this bounding box is in lat long. And since we are reprojecting our data to that, we need the coordinates in the target CRS. So we can also create data frame and reproject the bounding box as well. And then we can get our bounding box coordinates in that projection. Let's run this cell. It's going to reproject both our data set. We also have this bounds, which are now the coordinates of the bounding box in this projection. And that's why we could reproject and we could figure this out. So these are our bounding box X and Y coordinates. This is where we want our map to zoom in. Now we go and do the whole visualization again. We say, create a plot, set the bounds. So we have this X limit and Y limit. This is the function that allow you to set the bounds of your map. We have the bounds here. So we use this and say, this is your X min, X max, Y min, Y max. And we set our bounding box to that. One recommendation is to do this at the beginning of your plotting rather than later, because as you set your access limit and then you ask context tile to download tiles, it'll only download tiles for that region. If you do this at the last, you'll first download the tiles for the entire region. And then you set your you know, extent and it, it may not have tiles for that. Or it may have downloaded extra tiles. So when you're using context tile, it's good to set your extent at the beginning before you call context tile. We plot our reprojected data, both the path and the umbra shadows, and then we add our place map at zoom level five. Let's run this. We also added a title. We remove our axis, typically on maps, we don't want to have X and Y axis labels, so we can just turn them off. As we are running, you can see it's downloading those extra tiles. We are asking this as zoom level five, a little higher resolution. So it's downloading those extra tiles that it needs for stitching that map. One pro tip is you can use this technique to create a high resolution base map. If you say, I want to print this high res base map, high res poster of this area. And I have this, I want to do it from open street map. You can use this and download really high res tiles and stitch them up automatically without you doing any work. So you can also create some nice maps for you know, printing or for your wall decoration if you want using this technique. And you can see now our map is projected. You can see the shape of the US appears much better because it's projected into a projection that is suitable for the region. The extent appears to cover the entire region. And we have our data plotted on that. And now we have a pretty decent map that matches what NASA created. And we recreate this using context tally and GeoPandas. Big now you can explain the exercise. So we also have a Senumbra data and we want to add co contours for the same. So it is when the sun is partially covered by moon, we call this phenomena penumbra. And for that, we have this obscure value, which is the fraction of the sun's area covered by the moon. So we want to plot these polygons and have and also want to try a different base map. 
So here we have script where we are uh, have creating the penumbra uh, data frame here, uh, where we have polygon, we have obscure value, and uh, you just uh, and also we are reprojecting it. So you can start your script by adding these polygons and then explore different styling as well as different base maps. So, so some suggestions are here. Also, I think we have list of, yeah, so we have list of providers what all kind of map you can try can be explored from here. Yeah, we have a reference visualization that we are looking to see. Here, the, the polygons you see in Spenumbra, they are polygons. Each polygon has some value of how much fraction was covered. So the higher the fraction is, the, the more darker the region would appear when, if you are viewing the solar eclipse. So we want to style them in a, like a grayscale where those polygons with the higher value of this obscure value will be darker. And then as you go away from the path of totality, you will be lighter and lighter. So first step would be to see how can you visualize this data using a color ramp and a column value. So first try to create that. Once you have that, you can add that to your visualization, change the base map and see if you can create a map that looks something like this. Feel free to use your creativity from base maps and try to come up with something different if you wish to, but this is just for a reference that you can try to achieve.